Here to introduce the mayor of San Francisco, Forecast SF sponsor and regional vice president, health system innovation and community benefit for California Pacific Medical Center, please welcome Judy Lee. Judy. So, good morning. So I've learned a lot this morning from Tim and John, and I think the most personally relevant to me is John's comments about the uh, mortgage uh, rate hitting the all-time low. So I think I'm going to have to call my husband and take that refi offer during the break. But um, back, to, uh, back to the agenda. So um, since becoming mayor, Etley has prioritized job growth and making San Francisco the innovation capital um, of the world. And the chamber has worked very closely with the mayor on a number of initiatives. One that we're very proud of is the mid-market corridor payroll tax initiatives. That is to make San Francisco much more attractive to entrepreneurial companies. And at the same time to revitalize a, a blighted sector of San Francisco in the mid-market area. We're particularly proud of this kind of public-private partnership to move the city forward. Now, please um, join me in welcoming the city's first Asian American mayor, and um, I'm very proud to say a member of the Lee tribe, the 43rd mayor of San Francisco, Ed Lee. Thank you, Judy, very much for that introduction. Good morning, everyone. All right, it's great to be here at the San Francisco Chamber and, of course, the Center for Economic Development here in San Francisco, your breakfast for 2012. It's my pleasure to be here. And I walked in as uh, Ed from Wells Fargo was talking, and I just wanted to make sure you knew I am eternally grateful to the Chamber, to Wells Fargo, for helping me create 5,004 jobs this summer for our kids. That's a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful accomplishment. You know, I've been uh, your mayor for almost two years now, and everybody's coming up to me and asking, uh, are you enjoying it? And, you know, some of the politics in the city are, is hard to enjoy, but I will say honestly uh, to uh, Steve Falk, to the, to the Chamber, and Judy, and, and all of you are working together to keep our city successful, I do enjoy creating jobs. And when you see our youth get those paid internships or get that summer job at at a number of all of your uh, institutions, whether it's a bank or a Starbucks even, or, or uh, the Jamba Juice and all the others and the nonprofits as well as our city departments, and you see the glean in their eye that they can really be part of this shared economy in San Francisco. That's something I really do enjoy. And I will continue enjoying that for this whole four years term, even though I will avoid all the politics as much as I can. But I want to begin uh, by uh, saying that since I started, as Julie mentioned earlier, San Francisco businesses have created 22,500 jobs since my start, including 13,000 new jobs in the technology industry alone. Unemployment dropped from 9.6 when I started to 7.4%, third lowest in the state. And I said uh, in other jurisdictions, I'll say it again, I think we contribute to Marin and San Mateo because we buy all the wine up north for all of our hotels, and it's our airport that's keeping San Mateo number one thing. So thank you very much for, for understanding that. But also to translate, that means 22,000 or 25,000 San Franciscans are back to work. And according to our Federal Labor Department for the metropolitan area and San Francisco and, beyond, and just this uh, area alone, we are the number one job creator in the nation, number one in San Francisco. That's a credit to all of you. In commercial real estate, we've experienced the strongest absorption rate since 1988, according to the 2011 data. This year, we're looking to even best ourselves. We've got 780,000 square feet of positive absorption to date. And forecasters are telling us uh, to anticipate one and a half to two million square feet by the end of this year. You don't need me to tell you how successful you are. Just look around at all the cranes. In fact, I thought I was going to be late this morning, 
because of the crane action and a lot of the construction that's going on in the city, along with Oracle's open world and all the events that are starting up, but we're still getting around the city, thanks to SFMTA. But you can also see our success, not just in what we're building. Uh, today, uh, this week, we announced all the wonderful world-class events that we're holding and hosting in our great city. Whether it's Fleet Week, Hardly Strictly Bluegrass, the America's Cup, our own Giants winning, and by the way, thanks for beating LA last night. <laughs> or our very dominant performance by our San Francisco 49ers. Wow, both sides. This weekend is going to be one of the most significant ones because we've got all these in play, plus we've got concerts and, and so many events going on, and we've got neighborhoods that are activated and connecting up. So it's not just that we're showcasing uh, or that we're building our way out of the economic doldrums. We're showcasing our world-class city with all these events, and at the same time, we're creating jobs, and we're making sure our economy is boosting at the same time. We've been very successful at creating conditions to make sure that our investors and our entrepreneurs in this city maintain their investor confidence allowing them to innovate, to grow, and to create jobs. Whether they're a neighborhood or a small business or an international clean tech company or a new technology company, they've got investor confidence in our city. We're also creating investor confidence because uh, we have, uh, in working closely with our controller and all the other financial organizations of our city and all of our departments, we're now on a more financially stable and responsible path. We've done our pension reform. It's not 100%. We've got a big chunk of it down, and we're going to continue doing the smart things to make sure that pension is solid. And we've got structural reforms in our budget as well. We passed our first two-year budget. That's a wonderful uh, accomplishment, one that I'm interested in to continue to make sure we plan for the long term. And we're not going to rest on today's success. This is just the beginning, and you know this is just my first year, four years, and I'm going gangbusters on our financial economy, stabilization, and our financial ideas, because that's what we have to do first, is have a good economic foundation in which to grow. For the first time in years, you've seen a lot of unity move around this city, between business and labor, between the mayor and the board of supervisors. We've all come together on tax reform, on housing, are fixing our parks and open space. We've got this year coming together in an unprecedented way to put these issues on the ballot before the voters and to make sure it's the right time for all of us to be smart, to make long-term investments in housing and in parks, and it is time to do tax reform. Together, we're putting people back to work, building our city at the same time, and now the tax structure has to be addressed. And a lot of people keep asking me, what is, what is this tax reform? It's kind of complicated, and I tell them it's about real people, real businesses, and real jobs. Because, it's, because it is now that we're the only city in the state of California that's got a payroll tax. We're still taxing job creation, opposite of what we've all wanted to do. Many, if not most of you, have complained for years, why are we doing this to ourselves? Well, I'm happy to report that as long uh, that we're long last at reforming our business tax structure, we're going to stop taxing jobs and we're going to help companies large and small start here, stay here, and grow right here. And we need to protect existing jobs at the same time we spur job creation. In our consensus measure, we'll generate new revenue for housing, for economic development, and critical infrastructure like our roads and muni, investments that will help our workers and our businesses. And because we are growing and a vibrant economy, we require a growing and diverse supply of housing. So we need a housing trust fund. That's Proposition C. In creating a permanent source of revenue to fund the production of housing in San Francisco, we'll ensure that it will be a viable place for everybody to live, everyone of diverse backgrounds and diverse economic spectrums. I remain committed to stabilizing and increasing 
middle to income housing because building more affordable housing and middle class housing will build our economy and create jobs and make sure people and families can stay in our great city. You know, diverse interests do come together to make sure after years of debate that we have a long range sustainable plan to fund this affordable housing mandate for its production, increasing home ownership, and stimulating market rate production as well. And we need to continue to invest in our infrastructure needed in our city so that quality parks and open spaces can be the attraction for residents for generations to come. In San Francisco, we're pretty unique. We love our parks, we love our open spaces, and we, we need them to continue being a world-class city. Whenever I go to companies and have a chance to talk to the employees, they marvel at our open spaces. And that's why we've got Proposition B, $195 million investment that will not increase your property taxes. That's what Gavin Newsom assigned me to, a 10-year capital plan. And I worked very hard with Ben Rosenfield to create that, to make sure we placed discipline in the way we handle your general obligation bonds. If we don't fix it today, we're gonna pay for it in the long run. Our aging infrastructures uh, exacerbate existing maintenance costs, we know that, and that's why we have placed a great amount of discipline in all of our city assets. And when we do this, we've shown that we can build our assets and maintain them on time and within budget. And for our park spawn as an example, our 2008 park spawn, all of those projects have been under budget or, or at budget and certainly on time. And that means that this new $195 million will provide nearly 1,300 new construction jobs. That's how we get our city moving. And we're not gonna move backwards. We have to move forward, and I want our city government to move forward at the same time. Something that I'd hoped not to see on the ballot, an effort to tear down our Hetch Hetchy and uh, question whether and where we would ever get the cleanest water this country has from our Hetch Hetchy uh, source. And I've said it over and over again that this is a dangerous and misguided effort. Uh, it will be disastrous for our economy and certainly for our environment. And some people out there are suggesting that we can tear down this dam and still get enough water for our residents and our businesses. I'm telling you, that's simply not true, and it is insane. <laughs> All right. Now, that's what's going on. What about looking forward, since this is a breakfast, to look forward? Major development projects like Forest Cities 5M project to preserve the iconic Chronicle building and convert four acres of underutilized parking lots and industrial structures into an urban mixed-use campus. We are getting that done. The Moscone expansion project will ensure our convention center remains a linchpin of our city's tourism sector. And you know we have world-class tourism in this city and by expanding our Moscone Center, we're gonna capture a market that has been waning to come to San Francisco and not to other Sin Cities. You know, I've talked to a lot of people and they have these slogans like, what stays in some place happens in some place and stays in some place, <laughs> whatever that is. But you know, in San Francisco, when we hold conventions here, and get this, what all these great technology conventions we're having, whether it's Dreamforce and Open World, what happens in San Francisco, we want the whole world to know about it. We have nothing to hide. <laughs> so we've got a different slogan. <laughs> Along our waterfront, mixed-use developments are being planned for Seawall Lot 337 and Pier 70 that will create vibrant neighborhoods. And in just five years, we're gonna welcome home the Golden State Warriors here to San Francisco. <laughs> Thanks to the vision of Joe Lacob and Peter Guber and of course the leadership of Rick Welts who I see here today. This derelict pier that we've been challenged with for decades, Pier 3032, is gonna be transformed into an iconic facility that will bring thousands of people out to the waterfront and enjoying our waterfront up and along the way between AT&T Park all the way up to Fisherman's Wharf. 
and working together we are developing area plans that will shape our cities our city's future for years to come from the transit center district plan anchored by the new trans base center which will provide space for twenty seven thousand new jobs four thousand new housing units a thousand new hotel rooms and 12 acres of new open space from that center to the central corridor plan which will expand the south of market area hub creating spaces for 30,000 new jobs and over 10,000 new housing units we are diligently working hard on this creative planning for jobs for our future and we're going to execute these plans consistently with our city's values we need to make sure that our businesses and our commercial districts are places that welcome everyone to live, to work, to shop, to eat, and to have fun. And we need to make sure that they are pleasant, they're walkable, and that we can arrive uh, there and they're active around the clock and that they're green. And the newest way of getting around the city is go rent an electric scooter and share in the scooter economy. And then we'll need to roll up our sleeves. We're going to need to get it done. And I'm, I'm all about getting it done. I take these bold plans that were born out of our city's value, and I'm going to make them happen. I can think of no better example for us working together, as Judy mentioned earlier, than to bring about the changes on Central Market. Last April, we passed the payroll tax exclusion to encourage Twitter and other companies to take a second look at the neighborhood. And that was just that one King's Lane yesterday, which is one of the newer uh, entities uh, that moved into the uh, what we call the Twitter building now. And they're excited. You should meet and see these employees. They are excited to be on Central Market. Uh, they're talking about uh, their families, the schools, and what they want to do. And just a year ago, there was only less than 100 of them. Today, there are 300, and they expect to grow fabulously. Look at what else we've accomplished today along Central Market. Eight technology companies have occupied, leased, or purchased more than 800,000 square feet of space, representing 3,800 new jobs. There are 3,300 residential units under construction, and all of you can see that from 10th and Market down. We have five new performance and gallery venues that have opened in the past year with four more in the pipeline including ACT's renovation of the Strand Theater that they'll renovate into a 300 seat theater. We have eight new small businesses that have opened up in the past year in mid-market and there are, as well as two expansions of existing storefront businesses and more are on the way. In Central Market and throughout the city San Francisco has created an environment that embraces and celebrates innovation. Innovation is not only a significant driver of economic growth, but it enables us for tackling some of the most long-standing problems and historic challenges that we face. That's why I continue to support and promote innovation in both the civic and private sectors to create a better San Francisco. And with all of these technology companies that are moving into the city, we need to make sure that our workforce is trained and ready to fill these positions. To do this, we've launched Tech SF with an $8 million grant from the Department of Labor that will provide education, training, and job placement assistance in the tech sector. And whether it's for young people coming out of high school or college or people retooling in the middle of their careers or our returning veterans who want a chance to work in our technology uh, industry. We're working hard to ensure San Francisco residents have the skills, the training, and the opportunities to work in these jobs. This is a critical step to making sure that the recovery and the economic prosperity reaches every neighborhood in our city. Now, technology is not only bringing jobs to San Francisco, but it's bringing new solutions to our government. We're embracing the use of technology and to enhance our performance, to measure our performances, to increase transparency and communications with our constituents, and to transform our relationships with business and residents. Many of you in this room already know how hard it is and how difficult it is to start a business in our city. Business owners 
have to navigate through multiple city departments, state and federal regulations. So now we're deploying technology to streamline this process. And we're gonna make it easier with a one-stop shop to make sure our San Francisco businesses can start here, stay here, and to grow here. Innovation is at the forefront. Let me mention a special area of innovation that's going on, what I call the silent giant in San Francisco. You'll have uh, in front of you uh, this study. Uh, it is uh, entitled from our hospital council, the world leading center for innovation in healthcare and research that's produced. And it will uh, allow you to see how our medical industry is a $16.7 billion industry for the city and county of San Francisco, $16.7 billion. It employs 100,000 people in our city. And because of that sleeping giant, I'm going to be creating quarterly meetings with the medical council to make sure that I support their research, their scientific discoveries, and help grow this industry. Because by God, in our lifetime, this medical industry and this research, their association with UCSF, are going to create the solutions for the world in cancer, in arthritis, in autism, in all the diseases that have plagued us for many, many years. We continue to look forward uh, to ways to showcase all of the amazing and creative and innovative things that are going on because we are in San Francisco, the innovation capital of the world. We've even declared the month of October, not just Orange Playoff Month, Larry, also Innovation Month in our city. And so that uh, October, we've opened up uh, many, some 75 technology companies from Central Market to Soma are opening up their offices and letting people walk in, letting people exchange ideas and see how these companies are run. We're very proud of that and we're gonna continue embracing innovation for our future. Ladies and gentlemen, Chamber of Commerce and Center for Economic Development, this is the story of San Francisco. We are going forward. We're not talking about the negative things in the past. We are not talking about the 99% versus the 1%. We're going to be the city for the 100%. Everybody has a chance to succeed in this city. We are a city of innovators, of entrepreneurs. We've always been a city of risk takers and doers. And we look at challenges and we say, how do we work together to make our city better? That's what makes San Francisco not only the innovation capital of the world, but we have now earned the title America's best city. Thank you very much.